Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video, we're gonna start our introduction to probability, a word I'm sure you're familiar with, but might not really understand all the way. Now, probability is all around us in our normal lives, right? You can look at the weather app on your phone, it'll tell you the probability of it being a rainy day or it being a sunny day. You can turn on the news and see what's the probability of winning the lottery that week. So probability is really all around us, but I know a lot of us tend to not understand fully kind of all the math that's behind it. And so I'm hoping after this video, uh, we'll have clear understanding on what probability is to help us in future videos with different problems in math. Now, to me, probability really gets summed up with this single sentence that I'm gonna write right now. And that sentence is, how likely something will happen, right? When we open up the weather app and we're seeing what's the probability of it raining, we're seeing how likely will it rain that day. Now, it's not certain that it'll rain that day because with probability, nothing is ever certain. But we can try to determine how likely it is something will happen. Now, when we talk about probability, most of the time we use percentages to kind of show that, right? There's a 10% chance of rain. There's a 70% chance it'll be a sunny day. Oh, if you play the lottery, you have less than a 1% chance of winning, right? We tend to think about it with percentages and that's great. I like using percentages, but really what's behind those percentages is actually a fraction. And I know some of you right now are like, ugh, I hate fractions. Um, they are the worst thing, but I promise you they are not. Fractions are your friends, and we definitely want to understand how to create those fractions so that we can get those percentages that we're so used to making. Now, probability is just a fraction. Now, the probability of an event happening, let me write this out, but the probability of an event happening is a fraction, and that fraction is the number of ways it can happen over the total number of outcomes. Let me write that out. So it's a fraction, don't get afraid, but really what probability boils down to is we have these events that occur, right? Um, is it gonna rain? Or I'm flipping a coin and I want it to land on heads, or I'm rolling a die and I want it to land on the number four. Right, We think of probability with these events and to figure out the probability of that event occurring, it's just a fraction. Now your numerator is the number of ways that that event can happen over the denominator and the denominator is the total number of possible outcomes. Now the best way to really show this is really the easiest example of probability and I just mentioned it and that is flipping a coin, right? I think we're all familiar with flipping a coin. And when we flip a coin, we understand that there are two possible outcomes there, right? You flip a coin and you're either going to get heads or you can get tails, right? There is no other outcome when flipping a coin. We're gonna think that I flipped the coin and it's not gonna land straight up. I know some of you are thinking, oh, it can land straight up on its side. But for this, we're gonna imagine that it only can land on either heads or tails. Now, those are the possible outcomes of that event occurring, right? I'm flipping the coin, only heads or tails can occur. Now, we refer to that as the sample space. And really, the sample space is just a fancy way of saying all the possible outcomes. Now, let's say that I wanted to find out what's the probability of me when I flip a coin that I get a heads. Well, we look at that fraction that I made right there and it says that in order to figure out the probability of that event happening, I have to create a fraction. The numerator says it's the number of ways it can happen. Well, when I flip a coin, there's only one way that I can get a heads, and that's if it lands on a head. 
right? So I know that for this top part for my uh, numerator here, that I'm going to put a one there because there's only one way I can get a heads when I flip the coin. Now we put that over the denominator and the denominator is the total number of possible outcomes. Really, that's just the sample space. How many possible outcomes are there when you flip a coin? Well, there are two. So that's the probability of getting heads when you flip a coin. One over two or one half. That's it. That's how you find the probability of that event occurring. Now, I know we're used to doing percentages when we talk about probability. That's fine. We can always convert this fraction into a percentage. And here's how you do that. When you have a percentage, um, sorry, when you have a fraction, all you need to do is first convert that fraction to a decimal. So we take one and we just need to divide it by two. So if I take one and I divide it by two, we end up with 0.50. Okay, 0.5 is the same thing as one half. So 0 0.50 as a decimal, well, if I move that two spots over, right, that decimal is how you change a decimal to a percentage. I just need to take that decimal and move it over two spots and that will become 50%. So all three of these numbers here, we have one half, we have 0 0.50 and we have 50%. Those are all three different representations of the probability of flipping a heads when you flip a coin, okay? Let's look at one more example, and let's see what happens when we roll a dice, right? Maybe you've rolled a dice before when you're playing a board game. We, let's assume it's a normal dice, a six-sided dice. Let's first think about that sample space, right? And remember, sample space is just the total number of possible outcomes. Well, when I roll a dice, and if it's a six-sided dice, right, we gotta think about it not as some crazy, I know there's some dice out there that's like a 20-sided dice. We're not thinking about that. We're just thinking about a six-sided dice. Well, when you roll a six-sided dice, the possible outcomes are either a one, two, three, four, five, or six. That's the sample space there. Six different outcomes for you to choose from. Now let's say we wanted to figure out, okay, what's the probability that you roll a four, right? We're thinking about rolling that dice. What's the probability that you roll a four? Well, we know it's gonna be a fraction and we know that the number that goes on top is the number of ways a four can happen. Well, looking at my sample space here, I see that a four only occurs in one spot. So I know that there's only one possible way of it happening. So I'm going to make my numerator up here a one because I only see four occurring once. Now underneath that, I'm going to put our new uh, denominator and our denominator is the total number of possible outcomes. Again, that's just our sample space. How many different outcomes are there when you roll a dice? I see our sample space has six different outcomes. So I'm going to make this one over six. Okay. And that shows us that the probability of rolling a four is one over six. Now, again, if you like to have it as a percentage, that's totally fine. You can again, convert this into a percentage just by first dividing the numerator by the denominator. So we'll go ahead and do one divided by six, and we find out that one divided by six will end up equaling about 0.166 repeating. It does repeat, so we'll just say it ends up being 0.1666 repeating. Well, we wanna change that to be a decimal. If I wanna change that to be a decimal, we just need to move that decimal point over two spots, and we see that the chance of you rolling a four when you roll a dice ends up being 16.66%. Or we could say 0.1666, or we could even say one over six, right? All different possible ways of showing 
that probability. And that's it. That's all probability is. Just for our brief introduction, that's what probability is. It's just a fraction. How many ways can it happen goes on the numerator. How many ways, sorry, how many possible outcomes are there for that event to occur? That's what our denominator is. That's the fraction you're always going to want to set up as we work through these next examples. It's that math magician, and I'll see you on the next video.